Hi, I'm Greg. And I'm Leanne. Welcome to Empowered Now. Where we save humanity one one relationship relationship at a time. time. We all struggle from time to time connecting with and understanding others and ourselves. So we hope to encourage you to live a more authentic and empowered life by sharing what we've learned as coaches and as individuals. Empowered Now is LGBTQ2IA alternative lifestyle, poly and kink friendly. Thanks for joining us and And enjoy enjoy the the show. So today we're going to be talking about the five love languages. And something that uh, my wife uh, is pretty interested in, and that is the sex languages. Uh, We're going to (laughs) discuss how they're different, um, what they look like, what the purpose of them is. So um, I guess I'll start out by explaining sort of the five love languages, because those are the ones that most people are going to be familiar with. Um, The five love languages were created by um, a guy named Chapman. And uh, the book is The Five Love Languages, How to Express Heartfelt Commitment to Your Mate. Um, The five love languages are words of affirmation, quality time, receiving gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. Um, Now, he theorizes that people tend to naturally give love in the way that they prefer to receive love, right? So that makes sense, right? So for me, for instance, my love languages, my top one would be words of affirmation. Tell me I'm pretty and I'm yours forever basically right <laughs> that's basically what happened with us yeah exactly right? exactly um yeah for sure and then the other one for me would be quality <laughs> time um and so so what about you what are yours for me um my top love language would be acts of service so i love it when someone who cares about me steps up and does something without my asking that they know i need to do or don't have time to do or don't have the energy to do um or they do something just out of the goodness of their heart to help out and then my second one would be quality time Mm -hmm. i like the idea of it doesn't have to be a very long time or extended periods but i like the idea of spending time with somebody i care about where we dedicate it to each other we focus on one another Mm -hmm. i mean we're pretty good at that I think so. Um, yeah, I would agree. I, I, I am, uh, I mean, I'm a quality time person, even though I'm a, a pretty sort of, you know, introverted person by nature and I enjoy my time alone, but I think that having yeah. my time alone allows me to really be present in my relationships. Um, yes. because there was a long time in my life where I wasn't, I wasn't alone. Um, I was surrounded by people all the time, constantly, and it, it was quite overwhelming for me. And so, my ability to be conscious and present and aware in relationships and showing up fully, right? Wasn't yeah. there. So as soon as I started to realize, wait a minute, quality time is one of those things. And it could be like you and I, we will sometimes just, we'll, we'll just go cuddle for five minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's wonderful to me, right? We'll set a timer for, we'll set a timer on Google and we'll cuddle for five minutes and then we'll get up and we'll go about our day. Right. But to yeah, me, that's for, quality time. for some people they're listening and they're saying five minutes. that's not enough and they're probably saying that because you know physical touch would be one of their top languages right and what's enough for you may not be enough for me right um or vice versa right and so that's where you that's where knowing this information and understanding what your love languages are uh, enables you to be able to communicate those better you know and so if you Mm -hmm. example of the five minutes and it's not always five minutes i'm just using that as an example but let's say i were to say hey you know what how about if we spend five minutes cuddling and you're like well i think i need a little bit more than that okay so i understand that one of your love languages is acts of service or i understand that your love language is quality time so it's important to you and quality time might look different to you this time than it does next time or the last time right Mm -hmm. well and yeah it's interesting too that um you know, let's, let's maybe talk about some of the ones that aren't so important to us, right? right? Um, or that are important to you, like words of affirmation. Right. When you hear words of affirmation, that kind of hits home for you, you, you receive it, right? And if I were to, um, you know, buy you something, it might not, matter as much it i mean all of these are are things that we can do for our loved ones and they'll understand that they're loving gestures right 
-hmm. Absolutely. Even if they're not <laughs> the top two. Um, oh. So, you know, the author of the book, uh, he, he noted that typically you have a primary love language and then you have a secondary love language. But I mean, all of them are useful in terms of how to show love. It's mm -hmm. just nice to know how one can really receive it. Right. Like, you know, like you mentioned, you know, um, words of affirmation for me. Um, I read somewhere mm -hmm. recently, I don't know where, but somebody, somebody put out there the idea that our love language, the love languages that resonate the deepest with us are the ones that we didn't receive as kids, as children. Ooh, yes. And I, yes. Can remember, I can remember succinctly not getting a whole lot of, of encouragement. Um, and I can remember not feeling like people were spending a lot of time with me as a child. I spent mm. a lot of time alone as a kid. Um, and I remember, I don't remember a whole lot of words of encouragement or, you know, attaboys or whatever. Right. And so I think those tend to be my two for that reason. Mm -hmm. So like physical touch isn't one of mine because I've never liked physical touch. I've never really liked being touched. I mean, I like it. I enjoy it in certain circumstances, but it's not like my <laughs> Yeah. Hey. Hey. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I'm like a I'm like a little boy again when people say, and I literally I get goosebumps. Look, like you can't. Well, you can't see them, but you know, like, <laughs> my, my arm is goosebumpy right now. It really, it really does matter to me. It's the way to to my heart. Yeah. And I know for you, acts of service is is huge. Yeah, um, like when you do the dishes and the laundry, baby. Yeah, oh, baby. <laughs> and I, do, and I do them often, and it's. It, but but the interesting thing about something like that, though, is is that I don't do it just because it's something I know you'll appreciate. What? I do it because it bugs the shit out of me too, right? Oh. <laughs> and you know I won't get to it in time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it just so happens to to be in alignment in that way, right? <laughs> um, and, and I think it's important to note too that. There's no wrong or right love language either, right? Some people might be, maybe some people out there watching this or learning about love languages might realize that receiving gifts is their top love language. And there might be some embarrassment or some shame around that because it might feel mm -hmm. superficial in some way, or it might feel, you know, um, you know, like it's not, you know, um, impactful enough or something, but that's not the point of the exercise. It's not to shame ourselves or to judge ourselves. The point is to understand ourselves. So if receiving gifts is your number one love language, embrace it and find a way to make it work for you and find a way to make it something that can be impactful in your life and that you can express to your partner or your partners, right? Absolutely. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a car every week, right? Like <laughs> a gift could be, you know, a flower from the garden. Right. right. It really doesn't have to be expensive or big or a grand gesture necessarily. It's just about, you know, connecting with them in the way that they receive love. Right. And like, for instance, I have a friend who um, her, she and her new boyfriend, they've been together for a short period of time now, I think six months or so. Um, but every time, every time, so her boyfriend gives her flowers often. And so she'll post, she'll take a picture of it and post it on her social media. And she's just all a flutter about it, right? <laughs> That's more than likely, and I don't know for sure, but more than likely, I would say that receiving gifts might be kind of high up on her list of, of, of love languages. Sounds so, like it. Right? Uh, you know, for me, I, I'm not a big fan of that, right? right. So you hate flowers. I hate, I don't hate flowers. <laughs> uh, well, he, here's how I see them. I see them as death in a vase, right? Like, oh, oh, <laughs> let's, oh. I don't want to, I don't want to watch them die. So potted plants are fine. I feel a little bit better about them. I can keep them alive longer for sure. Right. Um, but yeah, it's not a big deal for that me. That would be a great name for a death metal band. Death what? in a vase. Death in a vase. <laughs> and make it all one word and make it, make the logo unreadable, you know? <laughs> death in a vase. What? <laughs> Yeah. Say it with anyway. an accent. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Say it like it's German. Death in a busse. <laughs> uh, oh my goodness. And then, you know, know, both of us, we neither one of us require a lot of physical touch. Like we like the small affectionate moments. Like the pinching the butt. Um, pinching the butt. Well, I'm not sure that 
<laughs> for some people that might be the physical touch that they are seeking. And for others, it might not, right? Same. Same. <laughs> but I mean, before sleep, we cuddle for like two minutes, you know, and we then we go Google our Google separate Google. ways. I'm just kidding. We don't actually set a Google alarm for that. So. But yeah, we, we do for a couple of minutes and, you know, usually we hold hands for a few minutes and then I turn over. Well, this is wait, th nobody cares. This is it. a lot of detail. This is the TMI situation we're getting into now. So anyway, um, but yeah, so I, I, the other thing to note too, though, that's important is um, there's a couple of other la love languages that have been asked, added to this over time. Right. Um, it's, one it's, of them is distance or space. Yeah. Right. So boundaries, opportunity to pine or reflect, give them an opportunity for personal growth, hobbies, relaxation. I'm reading, by the way, relaxation, mm -hmm. distress and peaceful solitude, opportunity to heal and regroup. So for I me, think you read I think you read de-stress as distress. Oh, de-stress. Yeah. Sorry. De-stress, yeah. not distress. Uh, thank you. Um, it, but it does say distress on here. But anyway. Oh, whoops. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, so uh, uh, so distance and space. I would I would suggest that that's probably maybe my third, right? Um, yeah. Because I do I do require distance and space a lot of it, in fact, mm -hmm. and, and that's my time to reflect. And then it also makes the quality time together, like I said earlier, more impactful for me. Absolutely right. Right. Um, right. One of the other ones that has been put forward by a guy named Jeremy Steg. Stegmeier is quantity time, which can be easily confused with quality time. And so for some people, the idea of spending time, you know, in each other's spaces without necessarily having that face time. So two people in the same room working on different things, different projects, or one person's watching TV and the other person is, you know, on their phone, but they feel connected that way and that they they really require that quantity to receive love and that can be challenging if you know someone requires a uh, distance <laughs> getting the quantity might be challenging which leads us to the next question i guess that i have is is that how do we use these love languages mm -hmm. well i guess the idea is to learn each other's and not always default to giving love in the way that we are uh open to receiving it right right so we are you know we take the quiz together we learn each other's languages we find out what works for our partners and that way we can be present for them and show up for them in a way that's meaningful you know, I, I've dated people before who give me a lot of gifts and it really doesn't mean anything to me. <laughs> it doesn't, I'm just kind of like, meh, whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you love me? Like, I can't tell. We don't spend enough quality time together, right? Right. Um, <laughs> it's just, it doesn't right. work. So in their head, it's important to note too, that in their head, maybe they're thinking, well, this is an act of service. I've gone out, I bought this gift for you and I'm giving it to you. So that's an act of service, right? Right. Because their so, love language their love language might be receiving gifts and so they're confusing the two right so really they should sit down with their partner and ask mm -hmm. what kinds of acts of service do you receive as love um you know we live in a very cold country and so one of my favorite things when i didn't have a garage was to you know wake up and and find somebody that i care about scraping my windshield for me wow <laughs> yes Thank you. Uh, and that felt very loving, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think I think that's that's a good note is that, you know, this is how you use them. This is the purpose of them. Again, going back to that piece about not judging, right? You know, this isn't mm -hmm. about judgment. It's about understanding yourself and, and your partner or partners. And that's the core here is that, you know, um, when you can have some insight into how they receive love best and how you receive love best, then I think, I think, I think that connection can deepen significantly. Yes. And that's the whole so, point. And wait, before we move on, 
if you have multiple partners, that's the other piece here too, is to do the work with each of them differently. Right. Right. You know, like don't <laughs> don't assume anything. You know, you can always take the, the quiz. We'll we'll post a link to the quiz mm -hmm. um, on our podcast, um, and that way you can check it out. But it's easy to search. It's everywhere. Right. And it doesn't take very long. And it's fun to do with a partner because you can ask them the questions and and then get clarification while you're sitting there. Like, right. yeah. <laughs> oh, right. acts of service. Hmm. What does that mean? Words of affirmation. What kinds of words? Right. Yeah. What kind of gifts are we talking about here? Right? Yeah. Or, yeah. What does physical touch look like? You know, right? Exactly. So do, do you like to be pinched or is <laughs> it <laughs> exactly? <laughs> Um, yeah, and, 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 and the other, I guess, before we move on to the other thing, too, is, is that these can change, mm -hmm. right? Um, they can change. Uh, at least I feel they can. They're organic, just like most things in this human experience that we're having, um, is that they are organic and they can change. So checking in with mm -hmm. each other and checking in with yourself occasionally is, is definitely a good habit to get into, I feel. Well, and it prevents, I think, the idea of taking each other for granted or, or showing up in ways that are no longer relevant, right? So I, I spend time each day telling you how much I care or how wonderful I think you are. And unbeknownst to me, you, you've moved on from that. <laughs> yeah, I got over that one. Yeah. And so for, for a while, you're like, she doesn't love me. <laughs> uh -huh. Right, exactly. Right? And exact and I think I think I think the work starts inward, right? If you're if you're starting to feel like, wait a minute, that's not really resonating with me anymore, then maybe, you know, you sit down and you 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 do the work again and then you're like, okay, yeah. so maybe this time it is different. And maybe now it's more this than that and, and da 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 da, right? And again, to reiterate, you know, I think we all have all five, it's just a matter of the order. Like if somebody gives me a gift, I'm, you know, if somebody gives me a brand new record, I'm not going to say, you know, what the hell were you thinking? Right. <laughs> I'm going to appreciate the hell out of it. Don't get me are wrong. You, are you but hinting? It doesn't have this, doesn't that, what's that? Are you hinting? I'm always hinting. Always, always about the records. Yeah. I got a birthday coming up anyway. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So, but, but I think that, I think it's a matter of what is more important to you what yeah. what aligns with you more right and so for me it would be the words of affirmation is at the top of the list mm -hmm. right and receiving gifts quality time acts of service physical touch you could even have you know two that tie that are very close right mm -hmm. that you can't really distinguish between and it's like well they're pretty equal um, it's really important to talk about that and say, <laughs> you know, either one of these work. Um, yeah, exactly. They both have equal importance. Yeah. Right. And if there's if there's a an argument, a betrayal, a fight, a rupture in the relationship, you know, sometimes, no matter what's going on um, in terms of the efforts that you're making, the investment that you're making. They're not receiving it right because of the rupture so you know the idea is also to keep that communication going and not rely on these to solve a problem right you know right. you've you've heard the old story you know somebody is ha having an affair and they bring home a gift right mm -hmm. no 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 <laughs> right? right like let's 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 talk about why <laughs> this is happening right. and what is the rupture here and why are why are we dishonest with each other and get right. to the heart of it so that we can get back to trust and connection and right. that you know you can't just throw a love language at somebody and be like well i did my thing <laughs> yeah this isn't bare minimum stuff here that's that's this isn't you know this is i mean when it comes mm -hmm. to doing the bare minimum like you know you mentioned dishes and laundry to me that's just bare minimum taking care of stuff right but for you, that's that speaks volumes, right? So mm -hmm. I, I see that as support. I see that as care. You know, I see that as um, being careful about the house and mindful about what is needed and, you know, stepping up to participate 
rather than uh, I know that in a lot of relationships there it's kind of one sided one partner has a lot of the responsibility right and so the equity that we have worked to maintain is really important to me and especially when it comes to things like housework it's I mean it's lovely lovely right. speaking of which I gotta go change the laundry out. no <laughs> <laughs> all right so um yeah the bare minimum the yeah we don't want to we don't want to do the bare minimum for sure no so should we move on to the sex languages then yes it's sexy i i'm super excited i know um so, so tell me about, about this where, where did you okay. come up with this how did this work and well uh there are five sex languages that were created by someone named dr vice i'm a, i'm assuming that's how you pronounce his name w-e-i-s-s and he noted them as fun, desire, pleasure, patience, and the last one is acceptance and celebration, which, you know, it, it's great. I love him. It's, you know, these are all very valuable uh, tools. And I felt there were some things that were missing or maybe some things that could be kind of like tweaked a little bit. So, I added a few. I added uh, kink, intellectual stimulation, and I, and uh, I added also pursuit. And I took what I assume is pleasure and pulled it apart into two different categories. So sensory stimulation and romance, because for me, those are very different. So, you know, Obviously, this is based on a lot of my own experiences and uh, how I see sex and how I see intimacy and the things that are uh, different categories for me personally. So I figured there must be other people out there that feel the same way. <laughs> I think we should break them down into the eight that you've come up with and then. Yeah, there's there's a few more than five. So there's eight. Um, so. Uh, Desire, which is similar to Dr. Vice. Uh, you want your partner to let you know that you're sexy and desirable and flirt with you and uh, keep that sort of attention focused on you. Um, I added creativity as a way to explain fun. So he says fun, I use creativity because I feel like it's a little bit broader in scope and it encapsulates some playfulness, but also some uh, imagination, some uh, creative, you know, scenarios that you might come up with. So you enjoy spontaneity. Uh, you don't take sex or yourselves too seriously. You like to share fantasies. You enjoy exciting locations for sex. You don't mind introducing food and toys and costumes. All of the, the sort of creative pieces that people bring into the bedroom. And then there's kink. Uh, you want to explore things like BDSM, fetishes, power exchange, where one person has control over another, role play, voyeurism, exhibitionism. That's not an exhaustive list. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, no, other things like bondage would go in there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, oh, yeah, Kink list is is quite extensive. <laughs> and then there's romance. So for you, intimacy is more successful, more pleasurable when someone is using poetic language or planning a getaway and you go to a different location. You have the candlelit dinners, the dancing, um, holidays, picnics, that kind of thing. Pursuit which is kind of related to distance when you think about it in terms of the love language. These are all kind of interrelated. We'll talk about that in a minute, but mm -hmm. pursuit. So you need some mystery space, the opportunity to kind of reflect about your re relationship, pine for the person that you're not with, miss them a little bit. Um, and that brings the excitement. And you also enjoy watching them from a distance, doing something that something that they're good at or something that they enjoy or even watching them flirt with other people or even have sex with other people this can all be part of pursuit so you see them from afar and you want them right 
Right. It's important to note there, though, that that wanting to see your partner flirting with other people or having sex isn't just about pursuit. There's other there's other things. Oh, no. That are, but that's just one of the aspects of pursuit that could be, you know, you could engage in or take advantage of. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, so th the next one is value. You need to know that your partner appreciates all that you do, all that you are. And without that, you don't feel connected enough to be turned on by them. Um, you enjoy status and recognition from your partner privately and publicly. When they say something nice about you in public and you know they're they're complimenting their the fact that they're with you and, and that they enjoy you so much, that really gets you going. Mm -hmm. um, sensory stimulation. So this is long pleasure-based activities, extended foreplay. Some people are like, who wouldn't want that? But you know, there's lots of people that don't need that or want that. Um, stimulating all five of your senses, making sure that the environment is pleasurable. So, you know, high thread count on the sheets, scented candles, um, music, those can all affect your sexual intimacy. And intellectual stimulation. So you enjoy debates and long discussions, getting into hot topics and uh, you enjoy the way your partner's mind works and how it stimulates your mind. So yeah, I think that's, that's an interesting breakdown. Yeah, it is, it is. It's funny because when I first read this list, um, I remember you brought it to me and mm -hmm. I was looking through it and then I was like, why is desire on here? Because that seems like a no brainer to me. And then you pointed out to me that, you know, that's because it's probably your number one sex language. So and then no I created a quiz about the sex languages. And what did you find out? I found out that it's right. Desire is definitely my number <laughs> one sex language for sure. Which makes sense when you tie it into the love languages. Right? Yes. Because work with affirmation is my number one love language, right? It's the way I receive love the, the best, right? Is, is So when somebody tells me, that I'm, or makes me feel sexy and desirable, um, then mm. that in turn makes me want to do the same and give. And, and I think a lot of that too, I mean, unpacking this a little bit here, if I can, I think a lot of that comes from the idea of, of, uh, of enthusiastic consent. If I know that the person is a hell yes, and they're definitely into me, then mm -hmm. that makes me feel more comfortable to be able to relax and to be able to step into the presence of, this, of the intimacy, right? Absolutely. So yeah. if I know that they really dig me and there's, there's, they're a hell yes to the experiences that we're having and they want to be with me mm -hmm. and not just with anybody, do you know what I mean? That really makes me feel valued. It makes me feel respected, which leads me to the second one, which is value. Right? <laughs> so for That's me, your value second one. Value. Yeah, it's my second one. So um, I need to know that my partners appreciate me um, and they, you know, I feel aroused when they acknowledge my acts of service, mm -hmm. right? Um, and then the third one for me would be pursuit, again, tying into the love languages of the idea of space, right? Mm -hmm. I like the idea of space. If I'm around somebody too much, I get overwhelmed. And that mm -hmm. works sexually too. I get, I lose interest. I disconnect, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So what about you? What are the ones that you came up with when you did this? I'll get to that in a second. I just want to comment on that because, you know, as your partner with the pursuit piece, it can, it can feel like, oh, you don't want to be with me all the time, right? And so <laughs> you can take it personally, but the, the point here is it's, it's how we function best, right? This right. is how we, how we achieve intimacy best. And so knowing that about you, taking time away from you actually serves the relationship. It serves me too. It's not, it's not all about you. Because <laughs> right. none of this is is uh, is is absolutely altruistic. Like right, all. no. I, I want I want you to be excited to see me. So oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and so I need to be apart from you, and and I think that's perfectly acceptable, and it, and it's really good to know, right? Right, and you also understand that it's not personal either. It's not you. 
No, it's just, it's just that space thing that I need. It's just, it, mm -hmm. it plays into that role of, of the idea of pursuit and mystery and, you know, and, and, mm -hmm. and whatnot. Right. So it's not a personal thing. It would be true with any partner. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think pursuit is probably pretty high up there on the list for me, but it's not one of my top three. So it's probably my top four though. Um, so my top one is intellectual stimulation. Doing things like, you know, even this podcast, I, it's not that I like get totally turned on doing it, but <laughs> the fact that we exchange ideas so freely and, uh, and debate things in such a healthy way really makes me feel solid and connected and therefore able to be intimate, right? Mm -hmm. right. Um, and then my number two is creativity. So, uh, you know, the idea of like being playful, not taking things too seriously, but also some imaginative things like, uh, you know, enjoying fantasy sharing and whatnot. Um, and then kink is my number three. So, you know, it doesn't bother me if you pinch me <laughs> on the butt. That is, uh, that's uh, a, just a fine way to show physical touch to me. Um, right. But for someone who, you know, doesn't enjoy that, it might feel like, why are you doing that? Why would right. you do that? Right? Exactly. Yeah, but I, I do enjoy that. And probably pursuit is my number four. But I think the top three are the ones that are, are most important. And if I were to kind of work with somebody as a coach on this, I would say, you know, put your energies in the top three. And really learn what you can do to meet your partner there. Right? right. So that they can receive can the feeling of intimacy. Right. And then also what you can do to to communicate those needs effectively to your partner and how your mm -hmm. partner can help meet you there. Right. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's really important, too, is that that uh, that two way dialogue. Right. I understand you. I know that, you know, you, you yours are intellectual stimulation, creativity and kink. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it helps me to better meet you sexually. But then you mm -hmm. understand mine. Um, and it helps you to meet me sexually. And it's interesting because when we were talking about these before <laughs> the podcast, it came up that unlike the love languages where there's some crossover, there's no yeah. crossover here between the two of us no. in our top three. Um, I mean, your top fourth, your fourth one would be pursuit, but it's not your top three. So then that begs the question, well, how do you, if there's no crossover, are we in misalignment then? Uh, but it, I, I don't think so because I've never felt more connected to another human being than I do to you. Aww. So I don't, I don't, I don't think so. So I think, I think actually it might be the opposite. I think because, because we have three different sort of um, languages each, it gives us six opportunities, six ways of connecting with each other mm -hmm. in any mm -hmm. given moment in any given situation. Right. That's a great way to look at it because I'll bet there's probably, cause there are eight, right? And so there's, there's more opportunity for less crossover. So mm -hmm. when you have that many categories and so there might be couples out there like us who are looking at this going, wow, like, should we even be together? <laughs> <laughs> but like you said, it's, it's all the more opportunity to find ways to be sexually connected and intimate, right? right? And the same could be held, the same holds true for the love languages too. Mm -hmm. There's all the more opportunity for you to to connect and to get to understand people in a different way. And going back to the love languages for a second, I wanted to make a point that I don't, for me, I don't think the love languages apply just to romantic relationships. I think they can apply to familial and platonic relationships as well. And they can, Absolutely. They can apply to professional relationships too. I mean, if you mm -hmm. have coworker around you that, that, you know, receives love and, you know, with, 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 receiving gifts, for instance, that's their love language, then you're going to be more inclined to give, you know, if you want you support or help, or, you know, you want to encourage them, then that's the way you're going to encourage them is, you know, hey, look, if you do this, then you'll get that right. That kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You know? so I think this, I think this works in all areas of life really. Yeah. And it works for, you know, your relationships with your family, like you were saying, sometimes mm -hmm. it can be really uh, daunting as a parent if you're not connecting with your kids in a way that they feel loved, right? 
and you're, you know, you're doing all the things and you think you're doing a great job, but you're working f at it from, from the wrong perspective and they're just not able to see it. Right. right. And so right. you can start to feel like, oh, I do all this for you and you're, you're not appreciating it. Well, that probably acts of service isn't their love language. <laughs> right. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And like you said, it can morph and change. And I think often as kids, things like acts of service, we don't really um, particularly witness, honestly, from the perspective of, you know, how much effort that required. We, do, we, we really are clueless as kids when somebody does something nice for us, how much they invested in time and effort and energy. So appreciation can be quite low. I mean, we can learn. We can be taught to say thank you and you know that was really nice but our level of understanding is limited right, mm -hmm. right and that sure. increases as we experience you know how much effort it is <laughs> to do something for somebody right so you know a parent who does the laundry for their kids their kids probably not going to be like gee thanks mom i love you so much for doing that mm -hmm. right or they or they might i mean depending upon i mean like you know you could develop that as an early at an early age you could you could develop that idea of receiving gifts and you know you come home from school and there's there's a, a bed full of clean clothes you know all folded and ready to be put away so right? they you could see that act of service as a receiving of a gift i see what you're saying yeah yeah right you know so i mean there's different ways to to interpret that i think sure yeah all right. open to interpretation yeah and that's the great thing about it that's the beauty of it mm -hmm. absolutely um i mean when you were talking about parents too i mean i think adult 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 parent relationships um you know love languages can take can 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 be really valuable with as well is understanding how your adult children receive love and how mm -hmm. your parents receive love as adult children right <laughs> are you calling my parents adult children <laughs> No, no, as a, as a, as an adult who's still a, 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 a yeah. Anyway, all right. As yeah, an adult right. who is still a child. Yes, I an understand. Adult who is still you know an, an adult working with parents, being in a relationship with your parents. I understand. Yes. Yeah, yeah, flood that. Anyway, back to the sex languages. Um, yeah, so it's interesting to me um, that I mean you've come up with this list and you've unpacked these pretty well, and you actually put a test together. Is that right? Yes, I did. It's not quite ready for launch, but it will be soon. And when it is, I will put it up for sure. That'd be awesome. I think people would be really excited to find out what their sex languages are. I know it was super helpful for me. Right. And I, I went through it uh, kind of assuming that I knew what it was. Yeah. Right. My top language. I, th I thought, oh, it's probably going to be creativity or kink. Right. My top language. And when intellectual stimulation came up, I was like, that totally makes sense. <laughs> and it, but it, but it also totally makes sense. I mean, and I, I don't, I don't know how to say this without sounding like I'm bragging, but it also makes sense <laughs> why you're attracted to me, because, <laughs> right? Because of that intellectual piece, right? I just kind of do that. Yes. Without really, it's just part of who I am. Right. Yes. You know, and you I'm... I have these dialogues and, and <laughs> conversations constantly and stuff. And so, I mean, I'm a pretty smart dude. I think so anyway. And, you are. And I think that that's one of the things that you were attracted to right away with me and continue yes. to be attracted. To. So my hope is, is that when I do become dumb, that you'll still love me in some way. <laughs> it depends on how creative you can be. <laughs> yeah. I think there's some rope around here. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yes, I think I think the uh, thing that you're talking about is when we were first dating, I said something like, I want to bleep your brain, not not yeah. bleep as in like, take it out, but like, insert yeah. the F bomb here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that, that was, that's still very true. I mean, the thing is, is that without that, um, in the past, my relationships that didn't have that intellectual stimulation didn't last very long or or had kind of a limited scope in terms of satisfaction for me. Mm -hmm. Right. 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 And that can uh, happen. 
I'd, I'd be curious to hear from people and maybe, I mean, feel free to comment or, you know, write to us or whatever, but I'd be curious to hear from people what their love languages are and their sex languages are. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, because we're talking from our perspective, which is just ours. It's, it's quite limited in that it's just mine and yours, right? And so I'm wondering if there are other people out there who maybe sensory stimulation is, their, is the top of their list and how that plays out in their life and in what sort of, you know, aha moment or discovery did they have when they realized, holy shit, sensory stimulation is what I'm all about. And mm -hmm. how did that improve your sex life? You know? Well, I know that a lot of people who explore tantric sex have mm -hmm. that as probably one of their top languages. Um, I have a girlfriend who, you know, loves the romance and part of the romance for her is the love language of, of receiving gifts. And so holidays and mm -hmm. flowers and, you know, uh, jewelry and, um, yeah, all of the, all of the things. Right. And it, it's, they, they do dovetail, obviously. Right. There's lots of dovetailing going on. Actually, we went through an exercise where you went through the five love languages and kind of ascribed them each to the sex languages, right? Or vice versa. I can't remember which way you did I it. But... I think I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did that. Yep. Yeah. I, I went through the, yeah, I went through the sex languages and then I, I, I ascribed them to, to the love languages. Yeah. yeah. And so you found out that there was, you know, words of affirmation could be part of romance, value, creativity, and desire, desire right? Right. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. it depends on, because even... <laughs> depends on what the words okay. are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it's funny because even as you're talking about this too, you can see how there's crossover within the, the sex languages. So sensory stimulation could also cross over with kink, right? Sure. Because because there are people out there that love the feeling of rope on their body and, you know, and stuff like that. Right. So, or yes, you know, there are feathers. people out there. <laughs> yeah. Right. You know, so there's lots of so, people out there. You're not alone. Right. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to say you're one of them? Is that what's happening? Here? I, I'm not, <gasps> I'm not admitting anything. <laughs> um, I think you just did. Um, and, and creativity yeah, so too. Right can be part of right. creativity right mm -hmm. and then as we see value and desire can be a crossover right sensory you know intellectual stimulation and pursuit in some ways can be crossovers right um mm -hmm. so i think you can really cross over into any of these um and they're pretty fluid and organic mm -hmm. um and again important to note that when you do the discovery of this and when you find out what your languages are the idea here is is that you have this information now in your toolkit that you can use um, and it's not to, to, to be, you know, admonishing yourself or to feel embarrassed or ashamed about it. Right. It's just information. It's, it's like, Hey, you know what? I really dig this. I find a lot of freedom in knowing that I like pursuit mm -hmm. because that's something I never thought of before. Right. Until I did this, this, I was like, Holy shit. Yeah. I can see that now. I can totally see how that's played out in my life and in my relationship. One of your favorite things to do was to watch me act, right? Yeah, I love that. From a distance, Miss appreciating me, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then looking and going, yep, 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 that, that, that's, my, that's my wife. You know, I, I, really, <laughs> I, really, I really appreciate that. So that's part of that value piece, right? Um, and pursuit. You know? All right. And then afterwards, when people would come up and there'd be all sorts of, you know, accolades given to you and, oh my God, you did an amazing job and and all of that stuff. And, you know, I'd be just kind of standing back watching and going, yeah, that's, that's really wonderful to witness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so I yeah, remember so talking about cool. that with you. Yeah. And that turns me on. Like that's a turn on for me mm -hmm. to be with somebody that other people respect and admire or appreciate or even want. Same when I watched you do your talks on male vulnerability, hun. Like I, I am, you know, number one fan and, and dig that for sure. It, you I'm know, it works it. in both ways, intellectual stimulation and pursuit. Right. Right. <laughs> and there's a lot of creativity there with you and, and watching you, you know, the playfulness of it all and, and watching mm -hmm. you create and, and be, uh, be an actor and, and stuff. So, I mean, really it's all just, it's all just there, right? And then there's sometimes when we're romantic with each other, not very often, 
but I would say romance is probably pretty low on the list for us. We're not, neither one of us is, is huge into romance. Um, when I, I took the quiz, I think my bar was like this for romance. <laughs> <laughs> I think mine intellectual was stimulation was like <laughs> yeah mine's pretty much at the bottom too and it's not to say that it's not and i think it's important well you know what something's coming out for me right now because i think i think i'm feeling a little bit of shame maybe around the fact that romance is so low on the list for me because mm. of some because of programming right because we're we're fed at least i have been anyway i'm not gonna say we but i've been fed this diet of Roman how to woo women or partners and you know gifts and you know grand gestures and all of this other stuff but that's just not who I am I mean our first date was at a Tim Hortons for fuck's sakes <laughs> right you know? and so it's like and, and I loved it and we go back to that Tim Hortons every year yeah right and and we sit and we have a coffee when we're able to do those things right we that's didn't do romantic. it last year because it is romantic, but it's not a grand gesture, and it's more of a sentimental thing, right? Um, and so maybe there's an element of romance there, but it's pretty low on the list. And so I'm not a big grand gestures kind of person. I like meeting people for coffee and just, you know, chilling and talking and stuff and getting to know them. And, and that's just the way I am. And I know that you're the same way. One of the things that I will never forget is when... Uh... Ivy threw a bachelor or bachelorette party for us and we were given the the questions, the newlywed questions, right? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah we weren't yeah. yet newlyweds, but it was it was uh one of the things was what's your favorite activity to do together? Do you remember <laughs> what you do you remember what you replied with? Uh grocery shopping. <laughs> we both love going grocery shopping together. We love it. And and for that, I think that speaks to the quality time. Right right? We're, we're being mindful about like our diet, we're, we're caring for each other, we're thinking about, you know, what we're going to feed each other and, and meal planning and, and we're spending that time together. And we always, you know, chat in the car on the way there and on the way home. So it is, it's quality time. And for a long time, that was kind of a staple of our quality time because I was at work and you were at work and we didn't see each other all day long. Mm -hmm. Now that we're both working from home, it's much different, but um, it's a bit more of a chore probably. <laughs> yeah, I've noticed like, that yeah, I'll stay here. Yeah, yeah I've right? noticed that we're doing that, but I, that's partly due to COVID too. Like, you yeah, know. right, right, right. So I think, yeah, I think there's a couple of reasons for that, but yeah, you're right. Absolutely. I think the, I think the grocery shopping thing for me, I, there's also an equity piece Mm -hmm. And there as well is that idea that I am, I am part of the decision making of the household. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm yeah. taking an active effort. And I know that acts of service is a big love language for you. So going is an act of service in that regard, right? Yes. And carrying all of it in and yeah, you know, right. washing all right. of it down. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think having this information can be so empowering. Mm -hmm. It can be so so wonderful to know what your needs are and what your partner's needs are and it just creates so much more deep and meaningful connections yeah there's something in that too in, in terms of assessing whether or not your partner is willing and able to step into those things that you need right, right? Yeah, are they able to meet your needs and help yeah. you in, and meet you in that you know in that place that you are like like if i'm you know if, if you weren't if you weren't on the same page with me in some of these areas then it wouldn't have worked you mm -hmm. know mm -hmm. well and also when there is uh you know different things that we're seeking um you know in a poly relationship for example you can have another partner that maybe fill some of those needs right, right. right. not that that you want to design all of your relationships to check all of the boxes so that <laughs> your life is perfect. But, you know, at the same time, those things can be taken into consideration. For sure. And, that, and I think that's the beauty of the human experiences is that mm -hmm. once we have this information, we can, we can design our life the way we want to. And we can, right. you know, if you, if you choose to be mono, if you choose to be consensually non-monogamous, if you choose whatever it looks like, right. You yeah. know, having this information gives you more, uh, power it gives you more opportunity to create the life that's going to work best for you which is yeah. what being empowered is really all about i think 
Well, and the ultimate goal, right? Which is to connect lovingly. Right. That's that's the ultimate goal. And that's that's why we feel empowered, I think, is when exactly. we have those pieces of information that, that we can put into into action. So many people are like, I don't know how to be romantic. Uh, right? My partner needs this. I don't know what that means, right? Mm -hmm. So reading uh, Chapman's book on, on love languages will give you opportunities to, you know, look at acts of service and, and see, you know, maybe that's the romance that they're looking for. If you talk to your partner and say, what does romance look like to you? Or maybe it's the gifts, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And the same goes for, you know, the sex languages, right? Is, you Absolutely. Know, you know, read up on them. Um, I mean, take the test with the quiz when it's available and stuff and, and have a better understanding of what they're all about and, and how they can serve you in your life. Yep. And I'm going to be putting up a blog about them this week. Nice. So when the podcast is out, the blog will be up and that way you can check them out and uh, yeah, see what you cool. think. Well, you know, thank you for coming up with these. I think they've they've done me a great service for sure. Just in the short time that I've sat with them, um, they've really they've really helped me to understand myself a lot better sexually, and they've also helped me come to understand, come to come to accept myself a lot more sexually, mm -hmm. knowing that I'm, you know, that these are the things that I need in order to feel sexually satisfied and to feel sexually connected and intimate with another person with you. That mm -hmm. it's just you know, it's like, this is what I need. And to have an understanding of that is really important, I think. So thank you for that. You're welcome. All right. So is there anything else that we wanted to cover? Any, any other, anything else? I on think this? episode three is done. I think episode three is done as well. So uh, I, I've enjoyed this immensely, by the way. Me too. Me too. Good. It's all, all right. that intellectual stimulation. I, I know we got we got to wrap this up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I meet you. No. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> not really. Um, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, anyway, all right. maybe we'll edit all this out. Who knows? Anyway, okay. All right, and remember, keep it kind and choose love. We'd love to hear your comments, questions, or topic suggestions, and remember to subscribe. And you're invited to join our Facebook group, Empowered Now Relationship Support and Advice for All. You can reach out to us on our websites at gregmillion.com and leannemillion.com or follow us on Instagram at gregmillion.lifecoach and at leannemillion.com.